Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be here, despite the fact that um, I deeply regret 15 years ago when I decided not to learn German and learn Spanish instead. <laughs> um, but thank you anyway for accepting to, to speak in English. Um, so I'm Stan Jordan, I, I'm French, and currently I work at Pussy Money in London. So as you most likely know, Pussy Money is uh, uh, the equivalent of Monetative in the UK. Um, and we have decided a few months ago to start uh, working more at international level, and that's why I was hired at Posimony as international coordinator. So I have two uh, jobs, uh, two missions. One is to develop the international movement, uh, which is bridging and, and um, making, uh, gathering 23 different national movements, such as Monetative and, and many others across the world. Um, so we're trying to cooperate more. And the second mission, and the main reason why I'm here, is to introduce you to a campaign that we want to, to, uh, to do at European level, and fortunately, uh, hopefully, with uh, as many organizations as possible. Um, before, uh, before working at Posimony, so I just joined the team over the summer, I, I was involved in, uh, I was a journalist at the time, and, and, in, and writing and reporting about the, the Euro crisis. Um, and um, after that, for a while, for f like two or three, three years, I was uh, very involved in also in the basic income, the unconditional basic income uh, mm -hmm. movement. I co-organized the European campaign a few years ago. Maybe some, some of you have been involved in this. And, and now I'm very happy to, uh, to be uh, also in the same uh, kind of ideas to, to basically remove the scarcity of money, to abolish the useless and pointless and harmful scarcity of money. So that's why I really believe in those two, those two concepts. But let's get into the core of the topic. So what I'm going to do is um, present you why at Posi Money we believe that quantitative easing for people is, is a good idea, is a necessary step uh, towards a full monetary reform, and basically why we think it's, it's why, why we think the monetary reform movement uh, should campaign for it. Um, and I'm going to do this by also talking about our experience in the UK because recently there have been a lot of discussion about quantitative easing and we think that there are lessons to be learned from, from what happened in the UK over the past few months and, and see uh, how we can do better uh, next time such buzz arrive. Um, generally speaking, I think massive change, like big ideas like monetary reform and so on, it's not just about having the right ideas, it's not just about being right, having the right theory, it's also about uh, thinking strategically and understanding the environment we are playing with, the politics and so on, and seizing the opportunities that, that arise. And, and basically, we, we think quantitative easing. So just to make sure, I'm, I'm, I've heard many times the word quantitative easing being mentioned <coughs> before, but I'm not sure what was said. Uh, so just to make sure we are speaking at the same level of information. So basically right now, the European Central Bank is printing 60 billion euro, euros a month for at least 18 months, so one year and a half, which would pretty much amount to uh, 3,200 euros per person for, for, the, for the 18 months overall. 18 months. 18 months. Yeah, yeah, not by, not per month, by but month. yeah. So yeah, it might be a bit confusing. Um, so that's you know the amount we're talking about, and and right now the ECB is already considering doing it more because it doesn't work. So they <laughs> it doesn't work, so they want to do more, right? That makes sense. Um, why they do that? Because they their theory uh, uh, is that by buying bonds, finan buying financial assets to pension funds and and hedge funds and so on, they hope that this will reduce the interest rate on, on the bonds, on the government bonds, so the w which are basically the safest assets. So they, they are trying to discourage investors from uh, investing in government debt. Uh, and instead, they want, by, by doing this, they hope that the, the, the financial sector will invest more into riskier businesses, riskier um, uh, lendings, and that would, uh, that would uh, encourage the financial sector basically to finance more the real economy. Um, and, and also by doing this, they are hoping that uh, uh, people who have assets 
that the asset will be less uh, profitable, so they might want to spend more into the real economy, and that would boost the economy. That's the theory. Um, in fact, it doesn't work so well. I'm not going to go into technical details, but just to summarize, this doesn't work, this does not reach the real economy, uh, because banks and financial investors do not, in effect, effectively, they do not lend more into uh, the real economy, uh, which is actually not all their fault, because on the side of the businesses, many businesses don't, uh, are not very confident into the, 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 the economic forecast, uh, so they think that the, the demand is going to keep stagnating, so they don't want to, to take more loans. And that's the same with households and, and people who do not want to have more credit because they're already over indebted. Uh, so there's a supply and demand problem which makes that the, the connection, the transmission doesn't work. Um, and also the second problem is in fact the, the, the very success of QE depends on the idea that we need more debt. Uh, if, it, if QE works, that would mean that more banks uh, do credits and more people take on loans, but it's kind of weird that we are saying this at the same time when um, we are told that we are having too much debt, right? Uh, I think there's <laughs> quite a bit of a paradox uh, here. Um, and in fact, because, uh, so basically because the ECB is injecting so much money into the financial markets, uh, of course the law of markets uh, says that if you put more demand into something, the price, and if there is no more supply uh, for those uh, for those debt for those assets, obviously the price of those assets rise, which eventually means that the people who own those assets, the people who have the biggest financial portfolios, they get richer. Uh, but of course, not everyone is rich. Not everyone has lots of assets. So this means that do, by doing quantitative easing, QE. Uh, the ECB is basically helping the richest among us. Um, and, and so this is very unfair. And eventually, the, the, the final problem, and there are probably much more, but the final major one is that by doing this, they are basically creating a new bubble, and eventually this bubble will burst, right? Is that clear? Yeah. Could you explain the picture? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's self explaining. It's just, you know, illustration. Um, so what do we propose instead? Uh, you probably have already in mind what, what we talk about, but quantitative easing for people, the way we, we understand it is the idea of redirecting the, the, the current QE money they are pushing into the, the markets. Instead of doing this, let's put the money right where it is necessary, where it would be useful. So basically, there are two big ways of doing it. One way is to have QE money to, to, uh, to uh, finance investment, public investment. And the second option, it would be a citizen's dividend or a basic income or uh, uh, directly giving money in, in people's bank accounts. Um, the main point is that in both cases, it would be different than conventional money, conventional QE, quantitative easing, because we would create this QE money free of debt. That's a major difference between conventional QE and, 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 and quantitative easing for people. Because right now what the ECB is doing is it's buying financial assets, but eventually those, those, those loans, those debt, have to be repaid. So it just, it's not a permanent money creation. It's just a, uh, a time-limited money creation, even though uh, uh, um, we might expect that they will roll it over, they will keep, keep doing it so that at the end of the day, it's quite permanent. But at least the ECB does not say it will be permanent so far. So what are the main advantages uh, of doing this? Well, if, if we could have uh, basically one trillion euros to invest into the economy, we could finance uh, a green transition. Uh, we could uh, improve uh, all the infrastructures, the public services. I mean, I'm not talking about financing public spending, but public infrastructure, right? Uh, that would lead to create more jobs, and on the second, uh, with the second option, with the uh, a citizen dividend, uh, that would mean obviously people would have more money to spend, so that would create more aggregate demand in the economy, so the businesses would, uh, uh, would have a more incentive to uh, invest, because they, are, they can expect a rise of demand, more customers. Um, in the, uh, for, for the people who have debt, uh, obviously uh, they could use the citizen dividend to repay the debt, 
and that would decrease uh, the level of personal indebtedness. And eventually, of course, it also means less poverty, at least in the short run. Um, and in a way, we can also think that this would also, whatever the option, uh, this would also create more tax income for governments and in the current context of the, of the debt crisis that would help a lot governments to reduce their deficits. Um, so that's just the main arguments. Um, but besides, um, so, so besides the, um, the good arguments for it, the main reason I want to talk to you today is to explain why we should campaign about it. So let's go on it. So posing money already two years ago, uh, I mean, it was not our original position. When, when posing money was started, we always thought that we need, um, we need to, to reform the system entirely. Uh, and, but two years ago, in 2013, we start, I mean, I wasn't there, but uh, Pussy Money decided that we might need some middle steps. Um, so just, yeah, just to explain clearly, so what Volget or full, full money system, sovereign money system is about, is about the, those two things, right? Get, create, get money creation in the hands of the public on one side, and on the second side, abolish money creation by the banks, right? So QE for people, what, I'm, what we're talking about right now, is only one of the two parts of, of the ultimate goal we are all pursuing here. Um, so just to, so the, the question is why, um, what I would like to explain to you is why we think it's still worth doing this. Um, so when the ECB started, uh, um, started or announced that they would start quantitative easing in the Eurozone, um, at the time I was uh, involved in the basic income and I, I wrote to Ben Dyson and I said, don't you think there is a, a, a campaign to do together? Um, and, um, uh, and so we started to cooperate a bit, uh, just uh, on my leisure time and on their extra time as well. And we, we worked together to get a letter in the Financial Times signed by nine, uh, 18, uh, 19 economists. Uh, so that was kind of the baby step. We wanted to, we wanted to test the water and see if, if a major or promi some prominent economist would back this idea. And, and 19 did. Um, so that was the first thing. It was um, March, March this year. It was in March, yeah, exactly. Hmm. And then um, what happened? I wasn't even at Pussy Money, but we were already starting to prepare the campaign. And what happened is that this guy, Jerry, Jeremy Corbyn, um, created a, a buzz about people's QE, which is an, just another formulation for QE for people. So who is Jeremy Corbyn? He's now the leader of the Labour Party in the UK. So they, they were, uh, they were the, the Socialist Party in the UK renewed its, its uh, leadership in September. And back in uh, June and July, um, this guy he was no one six months ago. I mean, he was an MP, but he was not very well known. He was very marginalized um, in, in the Labour Party. And he started to talk about people's QE. Uh, and in his proposal, it's about uh, infrastructure QE. So he wants uh, the Bank of England to uh, invest more, in, in, to, to, to redirect the QE money to uh, investments. Um, and, and really, that's been uh, the last, basically the last six months in the UK, there has never been so many people talking about money creation, quantitative easing, and, 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 and those topics. So they, there has been a huge shift in, in how the debate, uh, how the, the situation is in the UK has changed a lot since then. And that's also why, uh, and as I said, I mean, I want now to, to, to talk to you about what, what do we um, conclude, what's our lessons from that. Um, first, um, people's QE has been supported in the UK by many people. They, I mean, also very, peop the, the media, in the first stage, the media attacked it a lot, and the conservative attacked uh, the ID very much. But after, after a few weeks, more and more um, journalists and more and more commentators and, and observers eventually said, actually, maybe, the, maybe Corbyn's idea, how we presented it in the first place, not so good, but in fact, behind this, there is a very good and strong and bold uh, thing to do. Uh, so even the very quite conservative newspaper, The Telegraph, eventually came out saying, yes, there's a money tree, the private banks are creating money. Um, uh, this guy on the very left is, is um, a CEO of a hedge fund in the city. 
so it's really, it's not a Keynesian left, this guy is really just uh, a businessman, uh, came out and saying, yeah, Cobin is right, there's money to be created somehow and we could do it in a useful way. Uh, very Fakis also uh, came to London supporting Corbyn's proposal and I could mention hundreds. We have, we have uh, uh, at Posimony, we have a, a shared folder where we, 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 we have the full list of people who supported some sort of, uh, of QE for people and it's been really incredible. So yeah, we should not underestimate the, the, the power of this idea and, and how people would, um, would be receptive to it. Um, basically this means that taboo has been broken in the UK at least about money creation. Uh, maybe not about the full idea of, of reforming the monetary system, but at least we are talking about money creation now. And eventually, <coughs> and m maybe the, the most important lesson I would like to, to, to tell you is that if, if we don't take this debate, if we don't take the issue, other people will, and that's what happened in the UK. I mean, despite the fact that Posimony has been active in promoting alternative, uh, alternative forms of QE before, the, the, the reality is that we have been completely over, overcome uh, by, by what happened. We were not ready uh, by then. And this means that basically um, all the media, they, did, they did not mention Posimony. They mentioned, for example, this guy, uh, Richard Murphy, who is, you know, he's a blogger, he's not, he's not a big, big person, he's not a big personality. Uh, but he, he got picked by the media every day for like two weeks. Uh, and, uh, but the problem is that he's, I mean, uh, all due respect to this person, but he's, he's no one in the sense that he doesn't represent a movement for monetary reform. And, and all the other commentators who also supported Corbyn, they never mentioned pussy money. Um, so that's, yeah, that's the reality. So it also means that all the support was not coordinated. It doesn't, it did not uh, give the impression in the media that there was a strong popular support for this idea or even for thinking about money creation. And, and despite the fact that Posimony has uh, about uh, you know, uh, 50,000 supporters overall. Uh, and so th this was not visible in the media. So we basically missed an opportunity to, to, to become stronger. Um, so this is why Posimony, we think now, we are more than convinced now that we need to uh, see QE for people or something similar, you know, we can call it helicopter money or whatever. Uh, but we need some sort of middle step um, related to QE as a, as a counter proposal to conventional QE. Uh, so basically this is a, a conceptual timeline or how we could uh, uh, see our strategy. So we come, now we're in a bad monetary system. If we implement QE for people, this means that there will be two channels of money creation. So with QE for the people, we will start um, having sovereign money creation. Um, and, but of course, as I said earlier, this means the banks will keep uh, also creating money through credits. Um, but at least this will become visible that there are two different channels of money creation. And then we can have a much better informed discussions about which one is best. And the role of the, mon the, the, the monetary reform movement, our role will be to educate people and to make the economic demonstration that is better to create money free of debt by, by public institution as opposed to uh, letting the private banks doing it for us. Um, and eventually, if we do this job well, we will manage to completely reform the monetary system. Um, so basically, we think it's better to have a partial mon sovereign money system um, because we don't believe that there will be a big night for monetary reform. Uh, Right now, we are still in a situation where uh, the politician and the, even the central bankers and so on think it's too risky to switch completely towards a, a sovereign money system. Um, having some sort of QE for people would create a massive precedent, especially at the Eurozone level, a precedent that it's possible to create money um, out of thin hair and through public institutions. Um, and eventually, it will be easier to, to sell the whole project, right? Um, because there will be a, a, a workable precedent. So that's for the UK. Now I would like to focus more on the very specific context of the Eurozone. Um, monetary from the EU, a reality check. 
Um, it's probably not exhaustive, but here are a, a few lists of preconditions for uh, going towards uh, a, a full sovereign money system. From a legal and institutional point of view, in the Eurozone, sadly, we need to change the treaty to uh, really enter into law uh, a monetary, uh, monetary uh, a sovereign money reform uh, system. Um, the situation right now in the EU, sadly, is that changing the treaty is a taboo. Uh, all the EU leaders are traumatized by the past experience in, in having referendums uh, and proposing to people to change. No, they don't want to do this anymore or at least not right now. Uh, so I'm really hopeful that it will come again, but we have to, we have to take it for, uh, into account that in the, in the short term it's not, but it's very unlikely. Um, second, um, obviously we need more awareness and public support. Uh, so we need to be seen as a credible uh, proponent uh, with strong public support. It means we need allies in, among civil society. We need we need to not just be a movement, but a, a coalition of other movements and other organizations. The reality, uh, whether we like it or not, we're still marginal. And uh, right now, um, social movements uh, and, and even federalist movements who could see it as a solution to the don't, don't, don't talk about it so much. Um, event <coughs> thirdly, in terms of political feasibility as well, um, we would need a precedent of sovereign money creation before we can completely transform the monetary system. As I just said before, the, right now the policymakers think it's too risky to switch completely. There are too many, uh, too many uncertainties. So we need a, a precedent somewhere where, where it's proven to work. Um, so maybe that's an area where we're making progress. Uh, Switzerland and Iceland and Denmark are, are very active right now. The, so the, in Swiss, uh, they just uh, achieved to collect enough signatures to have a referendum. Um, and also Japan is thinking so much that more and more economists are saying there will be uh, some sort of helicopter money quite soon in Japan. But it's still not sure. And even in the case of Switzerland, um, you have to understand that the system in Switzerland uh, makes so that the referendum will not happen before three or four years. And in the meantime, the, uh, it doesn't mean there will be so much debate, in fact, because the, the, the Swiss people are, are used to having referendum all the time and they don't discuss all the, all the, the referendum every day, you know. Uh, it's not such a big thing for them. Um, so the referendum will happen not before three or four years, and even if it does, and even if, if they vote yes to the reform, it will, it will still take five, maybe t ten years before they actually implement sovereign money system because the proposal of the Swiss uh, is only to change the constitution. But then you need to change all the financial and banking regulations. Uh, so it will take, uh, uh, the, the parliament will need to, to, uh, to draft a bill and so on. It will take many years before this, the, any precedent happens. Um, and eventually, I mean, the, the best way, I believe, to, uh, to sell money, uh, money, sovereign money in the Eurozone would be to make the demonstration that it's a direct solution against the Euro crisis. I think that's what we need to do. Uh, but the truth is that now money reform is not at all in the agenda of, of EU area reform. Instead, we have a proposal for you know, uh, more uh, budget controls and so on. So we are far from, from, from this. Um, so basically, what I would like, what I'm trying to say is that we need a strategy to create a dynamic before, before we are in a situation where we can seriously propose money, monetary reform uh, in the Eurozone. We need we need to get somewhere. We need to, to start a dynamic and to win small victories before that. We need to, 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 to prove ourselves to ourselves and to the others that we are winning. We are part of the winners. Um, and that's why I think QE for people is, is a good opportunity for that. Um, why? Because QE is happening already. It's right now and it's here to stay. Um, in Japan, everywhere else where they did QE, they have been extending it all the time. So basically, it's been only nine months now that the ECB is, uh, has started QE in the Eurozone, but we can be sure it's going to stay at least for two or three years. Um, QE is an easy entry point to explain money creation, to explain uh, that banks are creating money, and that the state could do it as well. 
because they are doing it right now, but they're not doing it in the right way. Um, and also just because I mean, QE just makes sense. QE for people makes sense economically, uh, especially now that we're entering the deflation. Uh, and, and I think we can, we can sell the idea to central banks because right now they're incapable of reaching the in their inflation target. Uh, and I think they would be very happy to have uh, QE for people in, in, their, in, their, in their tools, but they don't right now. I'll come back to that. Um, but yeah, the point is because we have deflation right now, I think there's a, great, uh, there's a bigger case for advocating for more money creation by the state as opposed to abolishing money creation by, by the banks. I think, I think the message will be better understood right now because if we are talking to people about stop banks creating money, but people are going to say, yeah, but we are in the deflation. How, if, if we have less money in the economy, we are not going to... So I think I'm not saying one is more important than the other, but in the short term, it's, it's easier to, to talk to people about creating more money. And eventually, I mean, uh, probably the biggest argument for, for why we should campaign for this is because we are experts about the monetary system more than any other movement, more than any other think tank or whatever. I think we are the best to understand the situation and why QE is bad and we are the best position uh, to, to uh, propose alternatives. Um, I wouldn't say we should do this if I didn't think we could win this. Uh, and why I think it's an achievable goal QE for people is because it's not explicitly illegal, so there's a loophole in the treaty uh, that doesn't say anything against the idea of uh, giving money directly to the people. Uh, there are some, um, obviously there's a huge debate about what's possible under the treaty. There are many different ex interpretations, but basically the ECB itself has never said it would be impossible to uh, give money to the people. There are a few statements from ECB officials who say, yeah, but uh, it could work, but we are not sure that it's within our, our mandate. So they think it might be legal for them. But we can also agree the opposite. So basically, all we need for this to work is to make sure that the politicians uh, at the EU level and at, at in the member states uh, basically say publicly, we would be happy for the ECB to do that. And the ECB would have no, no excuse anymore uh, not to do it. Um, and, and eventually also, we can win this because there is a growing support for it among economists. And, and so our job is to make sure that the, the message is heard. Um, <coughs> and even if, even if I'm wrong, even if we, this campaign is unwinnable, I still think we should do it because it will make a movement stronger. Um, first, because if we start campaigning for something like three for people, it makes our movement part of a positive solution for the Eurozone. It makes us part of, of those people, of the, of the ones who are proposing something. Uh, and unfortunately, there are not so many proposals for, for a quick fix for the Eurozone. And, and I think we could play that role. Uh, but not alone. Uh, and that's the second reason. I think this is a great opportunity to bridge with other organizations, to create partnerships with uh, unlikely uh, alliance. I mean, um, Right now, if you talk, I don't know, to a uh, Greek social movement about monetary reform, I think it, you know, it's just too far away from, from the daily concern. Now, if you tell them, look, the ECB is doing this, uh, it goes there, it doesn't help you. And, and in fact, it's very true for Greece because the ECB doesn't buy the bonds of, of the Greek government. Now, if you, yeah, if you tell the Greeks about this, I think you, you can have a much better response because that's an immediate uh, problem for them. Um, and I think that's the case for many, many organizations, and that's what I, I'm working on every day, and, and I've, I've rec received good feedback so far. Um, as I said earlier, I think we have to accept that treaty change is not going to happen so soon. And I think doing this kind of campaign will, will, will help us to prepare, and we will be in, in, a, better solu in, a, in a better situation uh, after doing a campaign, whether, it wa whether we, we win or not, we will be stronger. And, and so that the day that a treaty change is on the table, we will be better positioned to advocate to changing the, the monetary system. Um, and ultimately, I think, uh, I mean, you could say, yes, but do we need to campaign for it? Because they are going to do it anyway. They are so desperate, right? Uh, but they, they might do it, but they will do it in a way that will not help our long, longer term objective. For example, they will do a query for people's so-called for people in a, in, a, in a way that does not um, 
they will keep the idea that it should be uh, repaid. So they will, they will do money creation, but it, it will not be a permanent money creation, for example. So that will not create such a good precedent for us. So we are better to work on pushing this idea and doing the advocacy for it, so that if they do, when they do it, they do it in a, in a way that's, that really helps uh, us to go in the right direction. Um, just a few words about how, what are we doing right now at Pussy Money. We are trying to engage in, with many civil society organizations across Europe. Right now, we've got approximately 15 organizations that are, uh, that are um, uh, willing to support this campaign. Um, we are, um, so the goal is to make the economic case, so we're trying to uh, talk with many economists and trying to get them endorse this idea. Uh, our next big step is the, the ECB meeting in, in uh, December the 3rd, <coughs> where we hope to have many economists uh, signing a call for, for uh, QE for people and eventually influencing key decision makers. Uh, we are planning a conference in the European Parliament uh, in February. Actions from keeping the lead on. No politician can see it on an LGT if you make it on if not. I think this is what we need to do. Find every single, I mean, the, find every single opportunity where we can push something that goes in our direction. I think that's what we need to do, and I hope we can do it together. Thank you. some questions. Um, I should say we are a little over the time, but uh, 10 minutes discussion, and just then we'll see it. Okay, so I, be I begin here, here, and then here again, okay? My, first, my okay. first question is uh, how the pieces get the money? Is it then cash? Because it's bank from the central, uh, money from the central bank, so do they get easily cash, or what is it? Uh, second question, perhaps we can uh, try to prove. I think your argument that uh, QE is uh, a good point because we have a deflation scenario. Um, I think this argument is not working because you have the point that the uh, money is not going to the people, and this is the, then you have a, a recurrent scenario. But if you bring the uh, money to the people, I think you will mostly get the inflation because if you had actually the stock market and the inflation measurement, um, you would see that you have not. Uh, Inflation denial, yeah. actual inflation. Okay. Okay. How does it come in the circulation, and what's about inflation fears? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. Okay. Yeah. On this one, uh, yeah. Technically, you are right. So actually, we have inflation, but the inflation is on the housing market and so on. Um, right. But uh, but I, I mean, I still don't think it's. Uh, I mean, it still makes more sense to have uh, inflation in the real economy. That's why the central bank wants. That that's what we all want to have some some sort of some some level of inflation because inflation uh, makes sure that the, the, uh, it, it's it's a good way to uh, avoid um, concentration of money uh, to have inflation. So in any case, we prefer inflation than deflation. And how does it come? Yeah. So um, to be honest, there are, we, we don't want to go at this level of detail as a campaign. We encourage all the stakeholders in this campaign to make detailed proposal, and that's really what, the goal of the campaign is encourage more people to do technical proposals. Um, but I mean, I, d I don't want not to answer neither, but uh, there are many ways we can see this going on. Uh, this could go through uh, national governments, and then the national governments through a social security system distribute the money. Um, the problem with that is some will argue that then the, the, the ECB is uh, violating uh, part of the treaty. So the best way would be that it's very direct, from the ECB directly to the people. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the best way. Going over there and then... <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's not cash. Your, your question yeah, is it's it's cash. cash. Yeah, because it is cash because that's the only central bank money we can use as normal uh, uh, people. Yeah, I think that... Uh, the, it would not be cash as notes and, and bills. I think it would go in your bank account. Uh, but that and, and I think yeah, actually that, that it would. That's that, 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 that. So what? So money in your bank account is that. So. No, that would no. be that would be reserves. That would be. No. But you don't have a system for that in yeah. your bank. Yeah. Well, that, that, that would be exactly, but that's exactly the, 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 that's exactly why we need to campaign for that. So that the day they do that, we say. 
Now we should have, everyone should have a bank account that is central bank, which is pure uh, reserve, not debt, right? That's also an opportunity for us to, to bring those first steps in, into the... Yeah. Okay, but that's really a different thing because we discussed before this story and mm. so when we also find out there are some problems. So it's really different. Maybe cash is the easiest way, in my point of view. Yes. Yeah, but that maybe, maybe the other way is, is better for, for what we want. And maybe this is also a topic that could be related to uh, the discussion about uh, complementary currencies in the Eurozone, having national complementary currencies. Maybe that's also, I mean, I'm very swayed. Our goal with this campaign is to yeah. Unleash imagination. Really. I mean, it's not about providing audiences. Okay, next question, Helge. Uh, who, who decides uh, which projects will be financed? Uh, and, and, and is there a, an absolute limit? Because some hundred years ago, uh, there were some good reasons why to separate the direct link between governments and, and the central banks, because uh, this has been exploited. So uh, the, the the economic limits uh, are a little bit, uh, let's say, unclear. So who makes the who, who makes the decision? What, what to finance? Again, I mean, uh, as anyone some ideas, I think I think there are many ways to do, to do that. First, the uh, we can use the European Investment Bank, uh, we, uh, which is already doing this job in, in the so Eurozone. The yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, they we are grassroots. <laughs> yes, but right now, you know, there is this all Juncker program. So basically, right now, the, the Commission is, is doing, you know, uh, already huge investment, and, and so that's also a way to get into this debate. And of course, you could also say each, each national government, instead of the bureaucrats, you can have national bureaucrats doing it. Um, but I mean, the point is, this campaign is about unleashing imagination. It's about saying the money is there, how, how to tell the world. To ask this question to our, our citizens, how would you, what you would do if you had 60 billion a month, uh, and that that I think is a very uh, appealing call. Right? Uh, so that's the limit. Draghi says we, we inject 60 billion, and you say, okay, I accept this amount, and and that's. Draghi says I, I foresee that if we do that, we will be di we will at this level of uh, growth and this level of inflation. So maybe 6 billion, because actually we don't need 60 billion for it to work, because they need 60 billion because it doesn't work, so they are, yes, we, need we need probably less, maybe just tw uh, 20 billion, and that would already make a massive difference. Um, <laughs> okay, Joseph, what's next? Let me man in red. Yeah. Hello, Stan. Uh, my name is Joseph Huber, and uh, I, I, um, I've been among those uh, who have signed that call for uh, making better uses of central bank money than uh, feeding the financial industry. How the year ago in the Financial Times. Uh, in hindsight, I have to say I, I already had reservations at the time. Um, I still have even more reservations now. I mean, it's of course better to give the money to the people than to give the money uh, to feed the financial industry, right? But you are presenting the, the whole idea as a way of as a cut-down version, easier to achieve version of monetary reform. And that's, from my point of view, that's the problem. It should not be sold as a halfway house to monetary reform, which, um, which it isn't, uh, uh, as a matter of fact. Because you see, uh, you, you focus on, uh, yeah, on the budget and, uh, and public expenditure. You are losing out of sight fractional reserve banking, proactive creation of bank money. That's no longer an issue. It's totally in the background, but that's about monetary reform. At the same time, you do not really change old bad habits uh, in, in budgetary and fiscal policy in the government. But you, you, um, uh, the program has no answer how to deal with the very high levels of public debt. These high levels of public debt, um, uh, and Helga has uh, uh, talked about before, these will continue to exist. Uh, quantitative easing for people does not do away with those high levels of indebtedness. And uh, so the, the bad habit of deficit spending that will continue to exist, you say. You, see, you say to the big spenders in the government of, of all stripes, you say, you see, uh, you do not have to change uh, your, your procedures and habits. 
um, you continue with deficit spending and you no longer have to incur additional debt, you will get the money debt free and you avoid the question of uh, redistribution by taxes. So for example, special tax on, on, on um, say on the super rich or so. Uh, these these uh, tricky questions are avoided and, and you, you, you have, this is your uh, proposition. It's okay and I think one can do it, but one should not sell it as, as monetary reform. And then you say, you do not, it, it, what was your formulation? You say, it's not, how do you just say, it's not explicitly illegal, <laughs> you say that? <laughs> not explicitly illegal and you do not have to change the treaty, I mean the Lisbon Treaty. Um, the special article relevant here is Article 123.1 mm -hmm. and this article explicitly prohibits the central bank to create money for the purpose of direct financing of government expenditure. And you cannot, you have no trick to, to come around, you have to deal with that. It's an issue, it's even an issue in the United Kingdom. Uh, the, the, Britons, the Britons don't like to do so. But as a matter of fact, you have, you have to deal with that. And so that barrier, this barrier really exists. You, you, you cannot circumvent it, you see. And, that, and I would like to say, um, that would it really have the, the effects uh, you promise? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. It might even trigger a little bit of additional growth. But what is the problem that we have? Uh, in the contribution by Helge Poikert, he told us very clearly that we have a postponed, postponed debt deflation, a situation of postponed debt deflation. We still have very, very high levels of financial assets and debt, and that situation has not been cleared, but has been postponed into the future. By quantitative easing, exactly, you see. And so is, if this is right... Back yes, back. conventional quantity yeah, physics. But, but if this is right, so a problem like yours would be very, very fine if we have the classical, say, Keynesian or post Keynesian situation with a lack of effective demand. So a lack of purchasing power. And to a certain degree, this will certainly be the case. But the, the bigger problem is our post pound asset, um, the, 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 the post pound. Uh, uh, resolution of the um, of the asset bubble and the, the high levels of debt, you see, and uh, to the degree that is right, the, the problem point of easing for people will be it will it will not actually deliver on its promises to the degree uh, uh, you are promising, and, and finally we have a special problem here in the German-speaking countries now, uh, and as you know. Um, the, the, uh, the Swiss initiative for launching a referendum on, in, on, uh, on, on a referendum on full monetary reform uh, that will be held in a two or three years' time. And th this, not, this is now definitely on the political agenda. And now you are introducing quantitative easing for people as a halfway house to monetary reform, which I repeat myself, which is, which is not true. It's not a halfway, it's not a contribution to monetary reform. It's a different thing. Yes. You, know, you, you can do it. We, we, we can, how should I say, we can say yes, it's a good thing, try it, try it. So we may participate, but it's not about monetary reform. But people present it that way and the public will almost necessarily understand or misunderstand it that way. And you see, then we have a, a, a conflicting situation. Yeah. So, uh, the, the proposal of quantitative easing for uh, people, as a matter of fact, will politically be seen as a rival campaign, as a competing approach to monetary reform, and then we have to decide, yeah, well, what now? And so, uh, this is actually, you say it's, you, will, you support monetary reform by this, but I think there is a great risk that it's, it's, a, um, it's a diversion. In actual fact, there is a great risk that we are going to divert attention and support uh, 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 from monetary reform, and so that's that's our our biggest concern right now. Thank you. Uh, we don't have time to have an answer this uh, uh, long and Perhaps I collect the last two.
um, people, and then you make a final statement. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that one will be long. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can also uh, have a discussion. Yeah. The, the, the no, right. sure. It was a good yeah, thing to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. We don't we can't discuss everything what yeah. was spoken here. I think it's two more people. I'm uh, sorry, we are a little run of yeah. out of time. Yeah, please. I have also my uh, question about whether quantitative easing for a speaker is a monetary reform. I rather think it is a signal to politicians to just to spend money. And, and, not, and not to think about how good the money is spent. And I think if you, if you think the question, what is quantitative easy, what is this in the essence? It is not in the essence that you uh, give money for the real economy. That's not possible by the construction of our monetary system. Credit to non-banks is only possible by money creation to the uh, uh, commercial banks. The very point, I think, is of quantitative easing that the risks of interbank loans is transferred to the a central bank. That's all. And this is the very point, and I think this should be thought about. Thank you. So last contribution and then final statement. Yeah, I, I heard all those objections, objections and I can, can understand them, but uh, I also understand uh, you uh, saying that you want to sensitize people to, to get them to think about it. And therefore, I think it's, it's a great idea. I would, would su suggest that we take it up, and uh, because now we all know everybody who, who gets busy with, with money and, and wants to talk to his friends or so. It just makes click in, in the, the brains, and it's done with, with money uh, uh, conversation. So I think it, it might be uh, an, an opening door to, to get in talk. Yeah. Yeah, so, please, finally, yeah, I try to be as brief as possible. Um, I think this is just one campaign. This is not the only and exclusive route for monetary reform. And I, I agree, technically, this is, not more, this is not a reform. Technically, this is just a very pragmatic monetary policy. Uh, so, okay, technically, we can argue about will you do this and that, and is it legal or not? I'm still convinced that this is still a good thing to do anyway for campaigning purpose. And, and, and I mean, I didn't make it that I'm, I'm speaking as a campaigner, not as, a, as an economist. Um, and, and about, so this is just a campaign. And if we want to convince your government not to have deficit and so on, that's, a, that's another campaign. Uh, that's another campaign. Go to political parties and let's, let's have uh, more uh, campaigns for other issues, but I think I think we have to keep politically ideas separate. I think the monetary reform uh, system movement as such doesn't have much to say about the deficit. To me, that's another issue. Uh, and of course, we can argue about that. We can disagree. But uh, in fact, we want to change the way money is created, not the way government is spending it. I think that's also a second, uh, another issue. So I still don't think it's, it's, it's a, I don't see why it would be a very strong objection uh, not to agree for three for people. Then, of course, uh, it's the, the evil is in the details, so I'm just presenting you a broad concept. Now what we need to do, until we have serious chances that it's, be, that it's implemented, what we need to do is to go into the details and make sound, viable proposal. Uh, and that's, of course, uh, something that's, again, it's, we, we should do that ourselves, otherwise they are going to come up with their, their uh, bullshit plans. Um, and, and in terms of not encouraging the government to spend money, well, that's precisely one of the strong, and actually more and more people are talking about the second proposal, which is giving money directly to people. And then there's, <coughs> not, if, there's no discussions about, about the, the government deficit and whatsoever. It's, the government is not concerned. And it, it's also a strong argument for keeping the independence of the central bank. Um, about the interbank, uh, interbanking, lendings, uh, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, trained economists, uh, they are probably f need, we probably need to investigate this, but I'm sure that it's, it's not, I don't, I don't think it's, well, maybe see, what, one thing to say about this is that basically, yes, QE for people, you know what, I, I, I confess, it's helping the banks. It's helping the banks. 
But you know, at the same time, uh, we are uh, all, um, I mean, austerity and so on is because of the banks, and we are basically, uh, we have uh, the Troika is here because they they need to keep the banking system pretty much alive. Otherwise, we are all screwed. Uh, so we are condemned to help the banks at some point to make them sustainable again. Uh, so that I don't see any problem with this. Uh, we and, that, and actually, three for people helps in deleveraging uh, the the the, the European economy. <coughs> um, about Switzerland, I don't see at all what's the contradiction. I mean, I perfectly understand that the Swiss will never. Uh, uh, push, advocate for three for people. I, I had discussions with them and it makes so much sense. Of course, they're in the middle of a campaign for, for direct monetary reform. I agree, why they but we are in the Eurozone, we are not in Switzerland as far as I know. And I think, I think the situation in, in the Eurozone is that we don't have direct democracy, unfortunately. And because we don't have it, we are obliged to deal with the politicians. And the politicians, they will never hear something like the Swiss proposal so right now, unfortunately. Um, just to conclude, Again, I think it's about creating a process. It's about bridging alliance. This campaign is not about answering all the questions. It's about asking, it's, it's at least about asking the biggest question on earth, which is what can we do with, with uh, money creation and how can we use it better than what they are doing now? I think, I, and I think that's already, that's perhaps a, mos a modest contribution, but it's already a massive one. Thank you.